from adults and being very fit and healthy and having families of their own. Right, Janice, remember we've got you here to look at your baby's heart. I believe you yourself were born with a heart problem. Do you remember what it was at all? I was born with two holes in my heart. Mm -hmm. So then I'll concentrate on looking at the baby's dividing walls in the heart and the heart valves. What we've got here is the front of your tummy. And the interesting thing that's come out of that is, first of all, that there are more heart defects in their children than in the general population, at least four times as many. So there clearly is a genetic factor there. But overall, 95% of them produce normal children. So it's not a major fear for them. But clearly, we need to look carefully when they're pregnant to check the baby's heart is OK. What we seem to have here is a fully functional heart. Everything looks pretty good. Perfect. So it's going to be OK then? Oh, yes. Oh, and the please. colours show us where the blood flow is going. So the structure's good yes. and the flow is good. Oh, that's a relief. Research in medicine is about keeping your eyes open, about learning from what people are telling you. And you don't have to be in a laboratory to keep your eyes open and learn. In a sense, nature is a huge experiment. So you can actually find out fundamental things just from watching people, and particularly special people like twins. It's no good making a discovery that doesn't do anyone any good. What you need to say is, well, that's very interesting. Now how can I help people with that new information? Other people began to hear that I was interested in twins and ask my advice. And that happened with a very important family, Jenny and Katie, who were actually referred to our unit because Jenny had muscular dystrophy of the type normally only seen in boys. It was a cause of absolute amazement that her twin sister, who seemed to be an identical twin, was totally normal and, in fact, was representing the county as a gymnast. So how can it be that Jenny and Katie are identical twins and yet one of them has a problem that only affects boys? Katie is now 17 and working for her A-levels with ambitions to be a graphic artist or designer. Jenny died a few weeks before this film was made, a victim of Duchenne muscular dystrophy, an inherited disease that's carried by girls but affects boys and leads to their early death. If you're a girl, you get an X chromosome from your mother and an X chromosome from your father, so that you have two copies of all the genes along the X chromosome. If you're a boy, you get an X chromosome from your mother but you get a Y chromosome from Dad. So you only get one copy of all the genes on the X chromosome. But a bad copy on the X chromosome causes a boy a problem. Now, of course, if you're a girl, you get a bad copy from Mum, but you get an X from Dad. That makes you a girl. So you have a spare. So a girl who carries muscular dystrophy is, is made up of a mixture of cells, some of which have the good gene working and some of which have the bad gene working. Normally, the good ones make up for the bad ones, so the girl doesn't have any problems with her muscles and lives an entirely normal life. Katie's life has been entirely normal. Her twin sister, Jenny's, wasn't. Jenny was very much slower to develop. She was uh, slower to walk, uh, slower to run when she did eventually run, um, generally smaller all the way through. And uh, she couldn't jump like Katie could, and having twins, the comparison was there all the time. We started seeing John Burnett, Great Ormond Street, and from my point of view, I was pleased that um, somebody should take an interest because I knew what the eventual results would be. Hi, nice Hello. to see you. He's probably one of the only doctors who hasn't treated like a freak show. The families grew close as John became fascinated by the enigma of these twins. Nature had given him the perfect experiment. Identical twins different in a single critical way. One of them had a progressive muscle-wasting disease that would ultimately kill her. 
John was desperate to help Jenny by halting the onset of her muscular dystrophy. He looked to her identical twin, Katie, for a possible solution. Enzymes were leaking from Jenny's muscles, causing them to collapse. It was hoped a transplant might help. So white blood cells were taken from the healthy girl and given to her sick sister. The enzyme levels fell, and for some time Jenny was able to walk. The following year, the twins underwent a bone marrow transplant. All these pictures are, are actually after the transplant, aren't they? That's what, that's we like. were hoping that it would have an effect and at least maybe arrest the deterioration of the muscles. We all knew that the percentages were fairly low, I think. But it, yeah, we tried faith healers and special diets and been everywhere. And this looked like the most likely thing that would help her. The treatment was a failure in the sense that it didn't cure her muscular dystrophy. But in another sense, it was successful because it told us something that we still don't understand, but could be important in the future. That is to say that the transplanted cells may have affected the chemistry of the body. And the second thing is that Katie can always think that she did absolutely everything she could for her sister. And although it didn't work, it wasn't her fault. Notice there with Jenny climbing up her legs, that's what's called a Gower's mm -hmm. sign, which is a very characteristic sign because of the weakness of the muscles at the top of the leg. It's quite hard getting up off the ground. This was actually um, the, rabbits. the summer that it was diagnosed. Yeah. Which, it was, in fact, was 81. Yeah. So, so that, that's right, and then you came to see us up at Great Ormond Street that's a right. little while after that, didn't you? So Jenny was seven. You can see that the very characteristic walking pattern that Jenny's got there. I can see why you thought it was a hip, because in a way it is the hips. It's mm. the weakness of the muscles around the hip uh, that, that show it first. So this is Jenny walking in 1986, just before she had the transplant, this mm -hmm. uh, record. I mean, that was actually, she was quite, she got progressively faster, didn't she, through that year. Mm. Um, that's a common trick that mm. kids develop, that they find that they can use the pocket to, to sort of lift their legs slightly, just to get it starting to move. While John was trying to treat Jenny's illness, his colleagues were analysing cells from the twins' bodies. They discovered that Jenny was using X chromosomes from her mother, which carried the muscular dystrophy gene. But Katie was using her dad's, which were healthy. Jenny and Katie became twins because of this genetic difference in their cells. They began as a single girl with a ball of cells inside each of which there was an X chromosome carrying a good gene and an X with a bad gene, the muscular dystrophy gene. Instead of forming a single mixed female, produce two females, one with lots of the good genes working and one with lots of the bad genes working with the result that Jenny showed the muscular dystrophy that she carried, whereas Katie had absolutely no sign of it whatsoever. From my point of view, the most important scientific information is this idea that genetic differences might trigger twinning. Jenny was a very special girl, and we all were praying very hard that we could do something to make her better and we all felt very, very sad that we hadn't done more. She didn't really complain very much, just particularly since we stopped all the treatment. She just accepted it as a part of her life. But I think the school helped an awful lot with that. They learnt that there were other people more disadvantaged than themselves. Is that we've got lots of memories of Jenny and all the things we used to do together. She was never upset. She was always happy. She was always cheerful. She never complained about her disability or whether um, his, what her sister was doing. She didn't seem to mind that at all. Jenny had a boyfriend called Abdul. They got on really well. They were always together. They really were a real good couple. 
She was very nice. She was really nice to talk to. I mean, I had a lot of problems and she had her problems. We used to talk to each other about it. Um, if I was stuck with work, she'd help me. And the same if she was stuck with something, I'd help her. And I just really remember how much of a nice person she was to be with. We miss her a lot. And if you hear a wheelchair, you sort of think, oh, that sounds like Jenny's chair or something. And you think it's them. And then when you look at them, it's not. That's quite sad. We knew that her life was maybe only another couple of years. Um, I had thought that she might make 19. And um, she simply went into hospital without a chest infection, which anybody else wouldn't even have worried about. to imagine what it must be like for Katie mm. as a twin. Now that Jenny's died, how has Katie coped with it? I think she's very up and down, really. It's very difficult to tell. My life would not have been the same without Jenny. Whatever she might have done for medical science, I would not have wished to have been without her. With a child's view of modern family life in all its various forms, Songs of Innocence, next. <laughs> 